Hi, it's Chester at Blue Pecan Computer Training, and in this video we're going to look at doing variance calculations. So I've got some students and their exam marks, and I want to work out the variance between these marks. I'm assuming here that this is the entire class's marks, so I'm doing a calculation on population variance, not sample variance. We'll come on to sample variance in the next sheet. So I would choose a function called var.p, calculates variance based on the entire population, ignores logical values and text values. So it will ignore Bill's NA mark down here. He obviously didn't take the exam. So var.p, and all I need to do is select the marks, press enter, and I get my population variance result. Now, if I wanted to calculate the variance including Bill, so we will treat Bill's mark as a zero, then we have to use a slightly different function, VARPA. Now, what this will do is it will treat that NA as a zero. If I select it, I should get a greater variance value. Now, if you're wondering how these variance results are calculated, I will take you through the calculation manually later on in the video. Just to point out though, that standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So if I calculated the square root of the variance here, it would give me a standard deviation figure. And you probably know there is a standard deviation function in Excel. So we'll choose stdev.p because we're doing calculation on an entire population. Select those figures. You'll see that I get the same result. Now standard deviation is quite useful, especially if I know the mean of my values. If I do an average, 49.22, that's the average of the marks of the class. Well, with standard deviation, I could say equals the mean plus the standard deviation figure. And then I could say take the mean and subtract the standard deviation figure. And I have an upper and lower value there. And most of the values in column C are within that range. Now the next sheet, I'm going to show you how to calculate sample variance. So sample variance is where you know you're excluding or haven't collected certain values for your calculation. So we're just gonna pick out certain students in our student list here and work out the variance for their marks. Now to do that, we're gonna use var.s. And what I'm gonna do is select the marks that I'm going to do the calculation on. So I've selected the first two marks, comma, then the next two marks, comma, and then Bill's mark the bracket and that's how you do a sample variance calculation now if you wanted to treat this na value as a zero you'd use a different function you'd use varA and again I would select my results including bills close the bracket and again the variance is larger because we're treating this value as a zero now let's go on and see how these variance functions actually work. We're going to get to the same answer as our variance functions, but by doing the calculation manually. So first of all, we want to get to this result using the var.p function. And if you remember, that does a variance calculation on an entire population of results and it will ignore the text values. So the first step would be to work out the average of the values. Average will ignore the text values. Then what you've got to do is work out the difference between these values and the mean. So we would say the mark minus the mean or the average. I would lock that, press enter and copy this down. Now we are ignoring the NA, so I could write a nice little if statement that would ignore it, but just to make things easier, I'm just gonna delete that. 
So the next step is to work out the square of these differences. So that would just be the difference to the power of two. If I copy this down, delete this one here. Then I want to work out the average of these square differences. And you can see I arrive at the same figure. So in summary, what you do, first step is you find an average of the values, and then you find the difference between each of these individual values and the mean. Then you square those values, and then you find an average of those squared values. Now using VARPA, remember that you would treat any text values as zero. So I put a zero in that place. So again, what we do, is we work out the average of these values. Then we compare these individual values with the mean. So we'd say equals the individual mark minus the mean, which I need to fix. And copy this down. Then I'll work out a square of the differences. Copy this down. And then I work out an average of the squared values. And I get the same result as VARPA. Now with the sample calculations, variance on the sample, first step will be to work out the average. And that'll be the average of the sample. then the difference between the mark and the average. Then the square of those differences. Now with var.s, we are ignoring NA, so I'm gonna delete these two results here. In the last step, you would sum up the square differences and divide by the number of marks minus one. So I'm gonna sum up the values in this column, sample values, and I want to divide it by the number of results minus one. So I'm gonna say count number of results minus one. Remember, I'm ignoring Bill's result using var.s. We need to put this part of the formula in bodmass brackets, so it's performed first, and then I press enter, and I end up with the same result as var.s. Now, lastly, let's do the equivalent of varA, and you remember that will treat an NA as a zero. So I've put the NA in as a zero in this example. First of all, I find an average. My sample. Then I'll work out the difference between the individual marks and the mean. And I square those differences. Then I sum up these sample results and divide by the number of marks minus one. So sum the square differences and divide by the count of the results. And that needs to be put in bod mass brackets before I minus the one. Press enter and I get the same result as VARA. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please subscribe and I'll see you next video.